Okay, this will probably be one of my last Dragon Ball Z fights fights because I get tired of constantly reading. If you've ever watched Dragon Ball Z from some of the fanboys, even though, yeah, I remember watching all the way up through the point where uh, everyone had to fuse in order to fight Boo, whether it was Kid Boo or regular or large, heavy, fat Boo who turned people into candy and ate them, as well as some of the movies, which you try to shoehorn into the continent, but it makes no sense. You know, why is, why is it Goku is fighting King Slug, or whatever, I think his name was, King Slug, and all of a sudden he's essentially a Super Saiyan, but that storyline happens before the Frieza Saga, actually even happens before the Namek Saga, because he hasn't actually done the point where he's been rocketed through space after all the injuries he sustained during the, the Vegeta Saga. So, someone threw out Hunter Prey Doomsday in perfect cell. Now, Hunter Prey Doomsday, of course, was this ridiculously overpowered version of Doomsday. This was the one who survived the battle with Superman, goes on to the planet Apocalypse, home of Darkseid, destroys the majority of that planet, goes one-on-one -on -one with Darkseid, and pretty much kills Darkseid. Gets teleported to another planet, <clears throat> where he ends up facing an energy-based being who defeated him last time by destroying like a fourth of the planet. He destroys him in a couple of panels by canceling out his energies. Superman is now trying to fight him. Superman clad in a new Genesis armor with a mother box, giving him all sorts of toys to try to defeat Doomsday with. And it doesn't happen. Then defeating Doomsday by pretty much Dusex Mahina taking him to the end of time. Because they could not defeat him any other way beyond going, okay, we're gonna we're gonna warp you into what looks like a, a Storanko Kirby sort of artwork and leave you there at the end of time. Where even if you were to survive, there's nothing to survive too. Versus Perfect Cell. Perfect Cell, of course, is the version of Cell that came back after Gohan decided to be eh, kind of overpowered, punches Cell, which makes Cell throw up, I think it was 18? Is it 18? Is it 17 or 18? So no, he didn't, he didn't absorb Android 16, which was the large green one that they took out the bomb so he couldn't destroy it. <clears throat> which then made that time, which would have been Imperfect Cell 2, depending on how you categorize your, your versions of Cell, who then self-detonated, was taken to King Kai's planet by Goku using instant transmission. When he came back, he was back to full power, and all of a sudden, da -da, he had gained Goku's ability to teleport via instant transmission. So I do these through a nine criteria system. Intelligence, findability, strength, speed, durability, and vulnerability, interjection, versatility, and x factor So we'll get right into this. Intelligence. Yeah, by this time I think Doomsday said the word METROPLIS, and he was able to say some words. He actually got out, you know, almost kind of a sentence. He was able to throw out a couple of words. But he was still a raw instinctual beast. So, intelligence is definitely subtle. Fighting ability. You know, Doomsday was raw, he was animalistic, he was very powerful. He, he wasn't throwing, like, punches and kicks. There's no real rhyme or reason to his abilities. Where Cell has got the fighting skill of the majority of Dragon Ball Z characters. Strength. Man, this is Doomsday. Doomsday, at this point in time, one of his strength feats during this, that story arc, Superman, in new Genesis armor, he breaks his arm. That's impressive. I mean, you've got a guy who's essentially in New Genesis, which puts you like top tier technologically advanced armor, gets his arm broken like it was nothing. That's a tremendous amount of strength. Speed. This is going to be kind of an odd one, because while Doomsday on ground is a lot faster, he has no flight. He can jump really high, but he doesn't have anything that's going to help him match lots of maneuverability that you see on Cell. You know, Doomsday, he was still a ground-based guy. He'd jump really high, he'd run really fast, he was quick on the ground, but against someone who's flying, he's got a tremendous disadvantage comes with maneuverability. Durability. Oh 
wow, this is Doomsday. Doomsday takes an energy sword, pulls the sword out, and pretty much nets himself instantaneously. So almost anything that he's gonna he's gonna be hit with from from Perfect Cell, yeah, he's gonna bounce back from it, burst instantaneously. I mean, we're really talking about his recovery rate. It is ridiculous. And vulnerability. I'm also going to give this one to Doomsday. You're probably thinking, but wait a minute. Cell was almost entirely impervious. <clears throat> one of the things that Doomsday does when he's on one of the planets, he actually attacks what ends up being the, the main power system. The blast is so powerful it knocks Superman unconscious and it turns the ground to glass. It turns all the sand to glass. I mean, when they show it, it's like a nuclear explosion. Doomsday actually gets stuck in the ground. Breaks out like a second later. So Superman, still beaten. Still like, what just happened? Doomsday is standing up like, what? What, what happened? I didn't feel a thing. And every ability that he's going to be hit with, he's recovering from, so he becomes invulnerable to it. Energy projection. You know, this one, again, you're looking at the abilities that Cell has at his disposal. He has got, as one person, but he's got raw laser beams, raw blasts, and numerous styles of them. Versatility. I'm going to give this one to Doomsday. You're probably thinking, why? You have somebody who's got a tremendous amount of skills, tremendous amount of abilities, versus Doomsday. Doomsday at this point in time was developing reactive evolutionary abilities. Superman was flying in the air. Doomsday all of a sudden gets retractable bone claws that had poison that was almost enough to knock out Superman. And that happened instantaneously. So beyond taking a move and then reacting to it and being almost immune to it, he was also developing additional fighting skills throughout the whole thing. When he fought the Radiant, was either the Radiant or the Radiant, and it was an energy-based being. They dove at him and cut him in half. He disassociated the energy of an energy-based being to the point where he couldn't reconstitute himself. That's impressive. That's impressive. You know, what Superman was doing is heat vision. He got to the point where he was almost immune to heat vision. That's impressive. That is a huge amount of additional skills. So now it comes down to X Factor. What is that one last final bit. What is that one thing that's not quite gelled up on everything else? And I give that one to Hunter Prey Doomsday. And here ends up being the big reason why. That reactionary evolution is so powerful. It's like, it is the, the cosmic power deus ex machina. It is so over the top. Doomsday in the storyline gets hit with Wave Rider's chronal energy. I'd have to kind of stop it. The next time he tries to do it again to slow him down, he cancels out the energy and almost destroys Wave Rider. That, that's impressive. That pretty much means that anything that Cell does, Doomsday will not only be immune to it, he very quickly has the ability to cancel it out. But he canceled out two energy-based beings. He was only defeated when they took him to the end of time and left him there. So yeah, you have to destroy every single absolute portion of Cell. You have to do the same thing with Doomsday. However, every move you hit Doomsday with, he recovers from almost instantaneously. So that means it was like, all right, I'm gonna get him with Freeze's Destructo Disc. By the time the disc finishes passing through him, he has no nervous system. He has no circulatory system. He doesn't feel pain. He, he barely thinks that this is going to cut him in half, and as it's passing through, he's going to be re-knitting. You're going to try it again, and guess what? It's going to break up on him. You try to hit him with a Kamehameha, yeah, you're going to put some damage to him, but within seconds, he's going to be recovering from it, and he's going to become immune to it. That's okay, you're gonna what, make what, like mini cells and shoot mini cells at him? As they explode, he's going to re reconstitute and he's gonna become immune to them. I mean, he was so over the top when it came to power. It's not even funny. You know, what do you do? I wanna destroy a planet. I can survive. 
doesn't matter. Doomsday will drift in space until he finds his way onto a planet. You have two people who can survive in space. And they're not going to die. Sure, you can be like, well, he, well, Cell could fly in space and just constantly hit him with energy attacks. And sooner or later, Doom is going to find a way to take that energy when he gets hit from it, probably do a canceling wave through it and kill him. Or he'll probably just shoot a bone claw through it, able to find a way to attach himself to Cell, probably poison Cell, weaken him, and then eventually disassociate him at an energy level. That is how powerful they wrote Hunter Prey Doomsday. I mean, they, they went, well, you know, he was that guy who defeated, who defeated Superman. Who's really left? We'll have them defeat pretty much the entire planet of Apocalypse. Everything they can throw at him. Which, the only person come close to doing that was Galactus. We'll have him curb stop Apocalypse. Then we'll have him pull a punt card on Darkseid. We'll have him take an Omega Beam. Okay, and then what? He'll then, in a couple of moves, pretty much take out Darkseid. He made him bleed. I mean, when Superman found him, he was like, oh, he's... Oh, crap. Yeah, I think he just killed Darkseid. In a couple of moves. That is how powerful he is. That he was able to kill a... Practically kill a god. In about two moves. So I'm pretty sure Cell... Cell's going to come back strong. Every time he's defeated. That, of course, would be the, the, the Saiyan aspect. But he's taking out a creature that will become stronger almost instantaneously. That's what's going to give Hunter Break Doomsday the Edge. He was written as a st stupidly over-the-top powered character. If he's taking moves and coming back from him like that. While Cell has a lot of moves at his disposal, every one he hits him with is going to make him stronger and stronger and stronger, and eventually, he's going to defeat him.